I wanted to move to a bigger school when I was beginning of my high school career, but my mom always told me if you're good, then you'll be good. So just playing against, you know, the competition, everybody looked at me like, oh, he's isn't playing against competition, but I never cared, you know? So that's how I came into college, like with the chip on my shoulder, because everybody, he's coming from a 2A school. So I was like, if I can do it in college, then there, nobody can really say anything. How was your summer? Uh, good, we're just uh, finishing up lifting with Coach Glass. It's, it's been fun just to get around the new guys that's been there and really start lifting the young guys that came in and just being able to build a relationship with everybody. You stayed in Stillwater all summer. Did you get to do anything fun that wasn't football related? Mm -mm, not really, I mean, up here four days a week. I mean, yeah, four days a week, get the weekends off. Not really, I mean, I live an hour away, but really ain't much to do back home either. So. Just stayed in Stillwater all summer. It's focused on football. Yep. Nothing wrong with football. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. You redshirted your first year here, 2021, and you were in a DB room with Jason Taylor, yep. Colby Harvell, Peel, Thomas Harper, Trey Sterling. What did you learn from those guys your redshirt season? Uh, those guys just taught me how to be patient. You know, it was hard at first coming from high school to my freshman year, just redshirting, but just looking how those guys are. They've been in that system for so long and how mature they were about going on things. And they wouldn't really like the the freshman type partying and all that. So they've been guys with like four four or the fifth years or three years. Just, so they, they taught me a lot just to, that college in, isn't all about partying. When you came to Oklahoma State, what were your expectations as far as playing time and starting? I thought I was gonna come in and play immediately because I, because Texas a and I w was going to go to Texas A&M, and then all that happened then. But I came in and thought I was just going to be the guy, you know, high school kid coming in, think he was going to be the guy. And as soon as I stepped foot on campus, it all hit me. Just like, dang, you really, you really going to register this year. It was hard at first, but after a while, I just got used to it. What did you learn about yourself during that red shirt year? Uh, I feel like that helped me, like with all the accolades that I got in high school, it really humbled me just to know that you're not, you're not just, accolades can only do so much for you on the football field once you get to college. You know, being the young guy that came from high school, just being the guy and then to come up here and be, I mean, I wouldn't say nobody, but just be another freshman that came in. With a touchdown pass, but also a fumble and an interception. And here come the Cowboys defensively. Kendall Daniels into the backfield and a loss of two. I think that's how you, your first year playing, your freshman season playing, you breakout season for the Cowboys, for the Big 12, freshman All-American, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year as a freshman. How did that prepare you for a season like you had last season? The accolade part? Just or? sitting back, learning, humbling uh, yourself. I feel like it really helped me just to realize that the game is different, just sitting back and having to relearn football because it's a whole different, I think it's a whole different game from high school to college, but. I feel like it helped me. I don't think I was ready my freshman year. I really don't. I feel like I had to gain experience, you know, through playing time. So the first couple of games was kind of rough. Just getting out there and just going to play football because, I mean, I was, what was it? It was about two years off of football. It's kind of weird just being back out there and making plays and just having fun. Plenty of time, Deckers. Pops up in the air and intercepted, and it's Kendall Daniels. A forced fumble and an interception here in the first quarter. And it was off the hands of Dimitri Stanley, and it's the second takeaway of the day. And Kendall Daniels right there, Johnny on the spot. It has to be Dimitri Stanley. That ball is just a little too high. I would love to have that one. Right How do you build on what you accomplished last season entering 2023? Uh, I feel like it's not much as a build. It's kind of like a start over. You know what I mean? Just like a... Because in high school, I mean, I started getting offers when I was a sophomore, so everybody thought my head was going to get big. Then I did good my junior year. Then I get, did good my senior year. So I feel like not as much as building on top of it and trying to keep up with myself from last year, but like making a new name for myself. You know, I mean, it's not really – everybody say that the accolades get the people ahead, but, I mean, I've been getting accolades since I was a senior in high school, so it's really not – it's not much as an aspect of getting the accolades. It's just going out there and helping my team win. I want to talk about high school. You did not play your freshman year. You played all through middle school, stopped playing fresh f football your freshman year. Why'd you stop? Uh, just, 
I feel like a lot of people compare me to my brothers, you know, and I didn't really like football. I mean, when I was younger, my brothers were high school, you know, athletes playing football, was the star on the football team. So just looking up to them, I think that's the only thing that really kept me in playing sports going up. And then getting up to high school, I was a 6'5", skinny kid. So, you know, everybody wanted me to play wide receiver my freshman year. So I was just like, I, this ain't something I wanted to do. So I wanted to go play basketball and basketball was something that I really wanted to play. And then we had, my friends had talked me into playing football. I was like, I was going to end up playing football one year anyway. So I was going to start now and then. Everything just happened. How good were you at basketball? I was real good. Yeah, everybody. I feel like everybody on a football team say that I went to a small school, but I feel like I could have went to play football, like seriously, like, I mean basketball, if I really wanted to just put it, put football down and actually play basketball. Did you have any offers for basketball? No, but I, my coach called me one day, or talked to me one day. He was like, the school is gonna call you and offer you. It was a big school, I don't gotta say the name, but it was a big school in Texas for basketball. Then they, uh. They they called and they were they looked at my Twitter and all the football offers and they was like this kid ain't playing basketball so yeah. Did you play basketball all through high school mm -hmm. with football? Yep, I did. That's the only thing that kept me from coming early to uh, to college early is football. I mean basketball. We went to state. We lost by a buzzer beater. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Huh. You wanted to play wide receiver, or people wanted you to play wide receiver. What position did you end up playing as a sophomore in high school? I got lucky because one of the starting safeties got mono one week. I was on JV and I got lucky and the coach threw me in. And then I think I did good during a scrimmage. And then ever since then, I just got the position. So I just kind of thank God that, I mean, not that he got mono, but you know, he'd probably be somewhere else if he didn't. What was your reaction when they're like, Kendall, you're going in? Uh, I feel like it was nerve wracking, but it wasn't nothing like, like getting into a college game that I think about it. It was kind of like, it was a scrimmage. I was down there with JV. They had figured out that they did, they were down in safety. So they just called me up. Then I just started playing football. What did you know about the safety position before they called you up? Nothing. How hard was that to learn? Uh, high school, I mean, it's just see ball, get ball, you know, run the alley, set the edge. So. I feel like just the safety position was way different. I had to learn how to tackle, you know, do all those things. How do you think it worked out for you? Good. <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. It's an easy find on the sideline. Third down 14, here they come again. And this is a diving pick for Kendall Daniels. How would you describe your relationship with Coach Tennyson? Uh, I feel like he's a great, that he's the coach that got me to come out and play football. I remember the first time I talked to him, he had just got the job sophomore year. We were in the cafeteria and he came up to me, he was talking to me, you know. So I'm, I'm a basketball kid. We're in basketball during the spring, they keep coming up and they're asking me to play football and I keep telling them no. Then one day I just was like, I'm just gonna go out there. And then ever since then, me and him has just had a, like a, a tight relationship, you know. He helped me get to this spot. He knew through the connections to the college coaches to get me exposure, you know. So I thank him just for being that you know, mentor, because he'd been around the game for so long. So he kind of is an old school coach, but at the end of the day, he's a good guy. He's a great guy. He called you the epitome of a leader. Yeah. What does that mean to you? I feel like, I feel like high school, I had to be a leader at, because my freshman year of basketball, I feel like I had the vocal part of being a leader, but I feel like my junior year, it was kind of like, my junior year, we had leaders around me, so it was easy. And then my senior year, he just kind of—they just kind of like threw the leadership on me. I didn't have no choice but to, you know, become a leader. So I just had to lead, and just, just he taught me how to lead, and then I just put it out there. So I really thank him for most of it. How have you carried that through your career, at Oklahoma State? Uh, just being able to tell people—I mean, not such as like getting on to people and cussing people out. Just walk. It, I feel like you get to people more when you're just talking to them like this. You know, if I take a young guy and just talk to him like this, then yelling at him and telling him to do this right or that right. So I feel like that helped me just to be able to see the leadership and then able to like replicate it. How big was your high school? Uh, we graduated 70 people. So it was real small. Yeah, it was real small. You were also a Gatorade player of the Isn't year. There? How difficult is it to come from a school as small as Beggs and mm -hmm. earn that 
accolade? Uh, I kind of don't think of it as crazy, but like my mom and my dad and everybody, they're like everybody from my school is kind of like, it's crazy that a small town kid, because I wanted to move to a bigger school when I was beginning of my high school career, but my mom always told me if you're good, that then you'll be good. So just playing against, you know, the competition, everybody looked at me like, oh, he's in playing against competition, but I never cared, you know? So that's how I came into college, like with the chip on my shoulder, because everybody, he's coming from a 2A school. So I was like, if I can do it in college, then there, nobody can really say anything. How many other kids from your high school received D1 offers? Uh, we had a cut, I think, I always tell people this, I wasn't like, if we go down the line from six years ago or even seven years ago, I wasn't one of the best guys that come out of Biggs. Like, honestly, like, there were some guys that came through Biggs before me that was like, even my older brothers, like, they just didn't have the exposure or didn't take the same route as me or, you know, didn't keep on ahead. Cause I had two other brothers that went through a lot of stuff. So I didn't really have to go through none. I thank God that that happened. But just some guys, you know, some guys didn't take advantage of it. Some guys didn't have the platform. So, I, f I always tell people that I wouldn't even, there was some there was some talent that came through Biggs. What exposure did you get, or how did you get exposure that other players in previous years didn't get? I think it was Coach Tennyson. I think Coach Tennyson made the difference of him having relationships with everybody. And Coach Tennyson, he's the one who got me to come back out for uh, for uh, football my sophomore year. Coach Shannon, he really took me in as a young, uh, I was just a young skinny dude about one, 175 and he put me out there starting safety he believed in me and coach MJ he makes me better every day because he's the quarterbacks coach and the offensive uh, the offensive coach you said you were going to go play at AM. you also mm -hmm. had offers from Alabama yeah Georgia mm -hmm. Clemson perennial contenders yeah. what made you come to Oklahoma State uh I feel like throwing up throughout the process it was always coach Duffy always calling me then when I Committed to Texas A&M and signed to them. Coach Duffy still called and like checked up on me, you know? So just having that. And then I had got my letter of intent back, called Jimbo, got everything back. And then it was just like, it was, I think it was April or March and I leave in two months to go to college. So I was like, I have to figure out something fast. I don't want to go through the recruitment process. And as soon as I got my name, I guess in the portal or whatever, there were some college coaches calling then. Coach Duffy called and then we just set that up and just was like, I'm gonna go right up the road. What was AM's reaction when you uh, changed your mind? Coach Jimbo, I mean, cause the coach that recruited me had left and Coach Jimbo, he just, I just called him and I thought I was gonna have to like, you know, it was an awkward call for a 17 year old kid just to go out there, call him, called him and it was like, I don't think this is the right fit for me blah, blah, blah. He took it well. He was just like, I understand. He was like, I wish, I was just like, this uh, this door will always be open, but he was just like, I wish you would stay, you know? But he took it, I always thank him for that, the way he took it, because he was, he really took it a, a great way. Did your parents say that you had to call? Yeah, yeah, my mom made me call him since I made the decision, yeah. Good for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're in your third season with the Cowboys, third defensive coordinator in your three years here in Stillwater. What does Coach Nardo bring to this team? A whole different aspect of football. Like it's way different than Coach Knowles and Coach Mason. I think it's just like, I don't want to sound too like, what's his name? But like, I feel like th having three different defensive coordinators and learning three different defenses has really helped me like, you know, really dial down into different type of defenses, how different teams play on the defensive side of the ball. And then this defense is way different than any defense I ever played, but it's fun, you know? So it's just a learning experience. Switching to a 3-3-5 scheme mm -hmm. this year, what are the challenges of learning a new, unique scheme? Uh, I feel like the challenges of, there wouldn't be no challenges. I would just be like, we're able to do way more things. You know, I feel like once you learn the plays and really sit down with Coach Nardo and learn everything, it's, it's easier than everybody expected it to be. In the 3-3-5, there are two safeties, two corners, and then sort of a rover player mm -hmm. in the middle, which you are anticipated yeah. to play. How do you feel about taking over that rover robber position that yeah. some people might know it? Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be, it's going to uh, showcase a lot of stuff that we can do with one player and moving them from linebacker to safety to, you know, blitzing. It just, it's just a different type of ball game, you know, just having that having that middle piece to be able to drop down or go deep. 
people say that the rover needs to be kind of a bigger, taller player. How do you think your physique fits that position? Uh, I feel like at first it didn't fit it because I was I was 205 when Coach Nardo first came here. Then I had put on 20 pounds. So I feel like now that I'm able to go down in the box and be a linebacker, as they say, sometimes just, I feel like my physique, you know, being a tall guy just helps it a little bit. What was the process of putting on 20 pounds? What did you work out, eat uh, more? It was, it was, it was different. Cause I had to, I had to sit down with Coach Glass and was like, what do you want me to get to? He was like, well, I would like you to get to this number. So I just, every day after during winter, every day after football, I'll just go eat Chipotle. Then I'd go work out. And then, so I had to like, I had to turn, I had to make sure I didn't just gain weight and lost speed. I had to make sure I turned the, the weight into good weight. So now that I've gained the weight and got to it, I feel really feel comfortable. So you're saying eating Chipotle yeah. is adding good weight. Uh, I wouldn't say eating <laughs> Chipotle is adding good weight. I would just be like eating Chipotle and then go run stadiums the next day is adding good weight. You know, turn it into muscle because it's easier to turn fat into muscle than to just gain muscle. So I'll take that and just, I mean, I ate a lot, I ate a lot. How many stadium steps do you think you ran this summer or in the process of putting on that weight? A lot. Uh, I think sometimes I always tell people that sometimes you're running up the stadiums and you just really think, do you, do you want to do this for the rest of your life? So I feel like the stadiums has really helped me keep the weight and change the weight into, but stadiums, uh, I'm happy we're done with those. You said you're running stadiums and you're thinking, do you want to do this the rest of your life? What was your answer to yourself when you asked that question? I don't want to run stadiums for the rest of my life, but I'll play football. <laughs> like football, that's why I always tell people, it's like football is way different than summer workouts, you know? Like we're, going, we're getting to the aspect of playing football right now with fall ball, but summer workouts are like, mm, people don't know, but they're tough. How is camp compared to summer workouts? Oh, I feel like summer workouts are better than camp. They're Fall. better than camp. Yeah. yeah. Why? Cuz I feel like during the summer you you wake up 6, you wake up at 5:30, go work out. It's going to be tough, it's going to be hard, but you're done by 8, 8:30. Fall camp you're waking up at 5:30. You're not leaving a camp, you're not leaving a facility till 7:30. So you're just seeing the same people over and over. The only thing that makes every single day different is the plays that you run. So the same meetings, the same, you know what I mean? So just being up here every day, all day, you lose track of days. And I call my mom and she's saying she's going to church. And I'm thinking it's Monday, but it's tough. How long does camp last? Uh, it's getting longer and longer because everybody, they keep pushing school back. So I guess it's going to be three and a half weeks this year. It's only three and a half weeks. Yeah. That's it. You got this. Yeah. And then the fun starts. Yeah. Week the one. Yeah, the easy, easy stuff happens. 2022 did not really go the way people hoped it would. Yeah. New season, clean slate. What are the expectations for this program? I feel like if you're not, if you're an outsider, your expectations is for us to not do so good. But if you're on the inside, the expectations is, you know, the standard. You know, the standard is to be great at everything you do. The standard is to go out there and play as hard as you can. The standard is way above everybody's expectations outside of OSU oh, Cowboys Stadium. What are your personal goals for this season? Uh, personal? I feel like everybody sets personal goals, like get so many picks and get so many things, but I feel like winning at the end of the day is what I want. I mean, I can have three picks in a game. If we lose, I'm not, I'm not going, you know, not talk to nobody for the rest of the day, you know? So I feel like winning is the biggest part of everything. Just win football games one week at a time. Ewers gets a shotgun snap, back to pass, throws deep over the middle, passes, juggled and intercepted! Kendall Daniels intercepts it and slides down at the 19-yard line and that'll do it! What needs to happen in order for you to consider this season a success? Uh, Big 12 championship and get into the, the, nat the national championship talk, you know, getting there. Getting into the talk. Yes. Not necessarily the game, just being in the conversation. Getting in the conversation then, because we got into the conversation two years ago, but we didn't get there because we lost the Big 12 championship. So just getting into the conversation and we win the Big 12, I mean, there ain't got no choice but to put us in the game. So just getting there. Oklahoma State was picked seventh in the Big 12. How do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, you know, it's people sitting on their butts all day that, that makes those. So, you know, it's, I mean, 
sometimes you just got to look at it and be like, they don't know what we go through all day. They don't know how hard we work. They don't know uh, how much work we put in with Coach Nardo. They don't know how what he's bringing. They don't know what Coach Dunn's bringing. So I feel like, I mean, they can sit. They're probably sitting somewhere on their computers writing it down. So, you know me, I don't really care. <laughs>